My name is Jacob Todd Broussard, and I'm a leader. For the past four to five years, I have been working on this biomythography project that incorporates my own personal familial history along with allowing outside influences and things that I respond to in order to create my own private symbology. One cornerstone of that project has been researching into this artist named Forrest Bess, who originally is from Texas, but are from the Gulf South region, which is where I'm originally from, from South Louisiana. Um, but thinking and really meditating on his practice and his paintings, they've become like really influential for me. But with his work, I was really struck by this vernacular form of queerness that relates to place and to landscape in a very particular way that allows for a lot of freedom and um, abstraction to be made manifest. So I've sort of strung these little breadcrumbs of things that I uh, like almost like forgotten histories um, and how they relate to place and how they also relate to me uh, to construct an image that has sort of a mystery to it. Like I always think of the painting as like, how can I set up a mystery to happen in an image? And I want the viewer to feel that. I want them to experience um, like the strangeness that a painting can have through the, the way that it's organized and through the things that are let into it. I have certain rituals that I incorporate in order to get my brain clicking. So if it's something like looking at a lot of images, then I start thinking about the role of the image and what an image can do. And that gets me really excited. And that can be something as foundational as like composition to something that's more conceptually driven, um, you know, an idea that's being conveyed in something. But really it's, for me, it's a lot of like, those ways of working are opportunities to access this imaginal plane that I believe painting lives in um, or has the potential to live in. So what are the things that sort of, what are the breadcrumbs that I can lay to lead me to that moment in order for that to sort of hit, for that to happen in the painting? For me, drawing and painting are interchangeable and inform one another because the drawing works as a foundation for the painting. So I will make a drawing that is very immediate, uh, very improvisational, and it will give me just the framework, just enough to then jump into the painting because I'm not having to worry about materiality and color. I'm just working with the foundations of drawing. Um, but leaving it open enough for improvisation to happen for the painting. So drawing almost sets up the painting for me. There's this idea that you make art and then you take that art and you apply it to something, but what if you allow the art to lead you to the thing that you're supposed to arrive at, the place that you're supposed to arrive at? So it's almost, for me, it's like, can the art become the target more than the arrow? You know, can you build out a little corner of something for yourself and just trust it? Um, with this body of work, I'm looking at a cousin on my mother's side uh, who I didn't know. He passed away in 2000, um, but he was part of a Mardi Gras carnival crew, or like a group of men. Um, this is the Mystic Crew of Apollo. It's one of the oldest, longest running gay crews in South Louisiana. Um, and it's based in Lafayette, Louisiana. And he was a member of this crew. Now, I didn't know him. I didn't really know anything about him. But when I decided to come back to South Louisiana for the spring and to do this residency, 
I started thinking about him and thinking about like, what's legacy? You know, what is, what is this person who I have virtually no access to, but I know was part of this thing? Um, how do I relate to this person? And is there room for me to like understand him through the limited resources that I have about him? The difference between an artist and a historian is a historian is tied to some sort of factual reporting, <laughs> whereas an artist, you're able to do more invention and incorporate feeling into something. Um, and for, and myth making, that's kind of what it is. And thinking about, you know, can we fill in the gaps where there are gaps in the archive? And for me, this cousin, his name is Jean, there's a huge gap, but then there's like all this opportunity for me to invent and sort of project and think about him, myself, place all onto this person. I think I'm more interested actually in being and becoming. I think those are more generous because they imply like something that you haven't arrived to yet. Like we're all in this process of becoming and thinking of like, can the painting be a part of that? Can it be like this souvenir of <laughs> this like point in time? The question about, you know, self versus subject or versus object, right? The object of a painting, the subject of a painting, and then yourself, like what is this triangle that's formed? I think a lot about this, like the private self made public. So if we think of painting as a private act, something that's very insular or very interior, then being made public through an exhibition, through a video, through um, a text, that's a, that's a transformation that happens. Um, and I think it kind of is similar to some of the ideas that I'm thinking about regarding carnival, where it's only a window of time where the private self can be made public. So all of these rules kind of get flipped. The man can become the woman, the peasant can become the king, uh, the fool can become the wise elder, like everything gets flipped. Um, and the private, private interiority of the self is then allowed to be made public, which I think is like really interesting and almost parallels a little bit of painting. Cause I do think of painting as a really private act. I mean, it can be public, but personally, I long for my solitude.